Jeff here with your tip of the day. Today we're going to talk about personalizing your letters and your emails. Do you like hearing your name? Subconsciously you do. That's why it's important to personalize all your letters and your emails. It grabs the attention of your reader. Given that, let's quickly look at the different parts of the letter. The two in the dear line should always have the person's name and never, never use the name prefixes. When you're, when you're using a database to register voters, a woman could have registered 20 years ago as a miss or a ms, and today she could easily be offended by that. Or, uh, let's assume that I, I live at home with my mom and my dad, and my dad's not a registered voter. If, if I get a letter, you know, from someone that says, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Jeff Shulam, assuming I'm married to my mother, I'd be pissed. The bottom line is don't use name prefixes. And, and avoid using the Dear Friend or the Dear Jones family. In today's times, with access to voter files, it should be a no-brainer to be able to get a person's full name. When it comes to householding the, data, the names in the database, it's important to use at least seven different criteria to make sure you get the Mary Jones and Bill Smith that actually live together. When it comes to the first sentence of the paragraph, it should hook the reader to continue reading. Make sure it's clear that you know something about them, that's something that you would like to solve or achieve, and that you, can, you have the answer. For the body of the letter, it should be conversational in style and at a fifth grade reading level. If you take away all the big words and the complex sentences, it allows the reader to have an emotional reaction to the copy. In other words, it allows them to read from the creative, emotional right brain instead of the analytical, logical left brain. For the postscript, treat this as the second most important part of the letter. Most people read the first sentence and the postscript. So use it wisely to reiterate the most important parts of, uh, and points. If you're sending out a, an email letter, the subject line should always have the person's name. Once again, everybody likes to see or hear their name. Some overall points. If it, your goal is to create a just type look and feel, so make sure the envelope is case sensitive, not all caps like the U.S. Postal Service ones and that you use the person's actual city, not what this, you know, the city's main post office is. And, and make sure that you spell the person's name properly and that you don't send duplicate letters to the same household. I, when I, that happens to me and, you know, it's someone that lived in my house 10 years ago, I throw both pieces of mail into, into the trash. So don't send duplicate letters. Don't forget that this is a great way to repeat the member's name at least seven times in a letter to be able to get that name recognition that you need. Having letters written with these tips in mind will definitely help you gain that constituent loyalty that you're going to need on Election Day. Well, I'm Jeff, and that's your tip of the day, and I'm just telling it like it is. Have fun and be passionate about everything that you do.